The Irish Human Rights Centre therefore has the floor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have the honour to read the oral statement of the Irish Centre for Human Rights. Honourable Chair, distinguished excellencies, colleagues and friends, close your eyes, imagine you are a mother, imagine you have an 11-year-old son, imagine you are preparing him for an ordinary day in school. While he leaves for school in the early morning, you are planning the dinner in the evening, but he will never return as he will be kidnapped by unidentified persons in broad daylight on his way to school. Imagine that, five years later, this mother was desperately reached for both your hands, crying and taking out vanishing black and white pictures of her son with his cheeky smile in school uniform, a little boy whose best days were still ahead for him. Imagine this woman asking you desperately for help and to speak to the state authorities in case they know anything. Ladies and gentlemen, this happened to me on, vis on visit to a country of our world community. The tears of a mother are the affirmation of universal pain, a pain that needs no translation. Ladies and gentlemen, the avial phenomenon of enforced disappearances is on the agenda of the international community since 1974. The committee began its works in 2010 and held 11 sessions, reviewed 18 states, reports issued the 18 concluded observation and four statements. Meanwhile, it contributed to the elaboration and clarification of international human rights law. The institutional evolution of the United Nations in this field is impressive, yet much work needs to be done. Too many enforced disappearances are still taking place as perpetrators are hiding behind the veil of impunity and lulling themselves in the full sense of security. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the Committee of Enforced Disappearances is a committee of its own nature. It owes immense gratitude and knowledge to the older committees as it nourishes itself from the past experiences. Or whether, as a new community, it, ha it has al also innovative and should be a role model for overhand probably future treaty bodies. And the Convention is one of the strongest human rights treaties ever adopted under the auspices of the United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all the United Nations. We make human rights violation visible. We give hope. The human rights violation of one is a human rights violation of all of us. There is no international body except the United Nations that had has and will have the credibility, capacity and audacity to bring the perpetrators to justice, lift the veil of impunity and wiping away every tear of the countless mothers of this world. Thank you very much.